are and uh, various town leaders uh, about a, um, a procedural enhancement to the way death benefits are calculated in town. And we have Nick Bamonte. Um, do you want to frame this, Nick, and uh, you know what it accomplishes? And certainly. Good evening, everyone. Nicholas Bamonte from Town Attorney's Office. So, at the last legislative session, the General Assembly overwhelmingly passed um, where this law comes from, um, which is Public Act 2416. And what the legislation does is uh, it says, as of October 1st, it is going to be the decision of the police chief, the fire chief, or the EMS chief um, in New Canaan, it would be the captain. They would independently have authority to make a determination if someone uh, under their charge, their department, died in the line of duty, so to speak, if they experienced um, a certain uh, heart attack that led to their death, a stroke within 24 hours of them actually ending their shift. So this um, act, what we're proposing here, the legislature also said, okay, that decision is going to rest on that independent person who is the chief of that department, unless the town takes some action otherwise. And what's being proposed here is that instead of that decision being made by just the individual department head, it would be made by a joint committee comprised of that department head, uh, the HR director, and the first selectman. And really the impetus behind this, there was a ton of public testimony. Um, there was a ton of support. I mean, out of the 107 pages I saw of the public testimony, there was one lobbyist who spoke in opposition and it was the life insurance companies. So really what happens here is um, our first responders, service officers, EM, EMT personnel, what, what tends to happen, unfortunately, is they will run on a, a heavy shift. Uh, they will respond to an emergency, a stressful situation. They'll get off the shift. And then, you know, they might be pulling a hose off a truck later on, or they might be just, you know, driving down the road back to their house, have a heart attack. They're technically not in their shift anymore they're not in the line of duty um but arguably by many and they made their case to the legislature that um heart attack or that sort of a medical um, impairment that leads to the actual death of this individual um, could still be related to that duty so if someone dies for those reasons those limited reasons within 24 hours of their shift ending, they can still be deemed to have died in the line of duty. And here in New Canaan, that determination would be made by that committee of three. And so, so what does dying in the line of duty mean? Um, there's benefits, really, is what it comes down to. And this, this, the legislature expressly says, this has nothing to do with workers' compensation benefits. So the, the determination there and the timing, that does not weigh into what this individual might be entitled to or their, their family um, under comp. Um, what this would make certain individuals who are deemed to have died in the line of duty eligible for are things like there's a handful of, um, Albie, I, 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 he knows some of them too. There's a handful of federal um, I think there's academic support. There's some some grants for the family available. There's local tax abatements. Um, for example, our our town has on its local ordinances a tax abatement for first responders who die in the line of duty. So that would make these folks who are deemed to have died in the line of duty, even though they died within 24 hours after their shift ended, 
they would be eligible for this sort of benefit. And then more practical things like a, uh, a, a more robust and um, um, official funeral services, uh, things of that nature. So really, I think that's what's going to be accomplished here. The, the main point here is, as of October 1st, the, the law says one way or the other, this determination is going to fall on the hands of the department head, the chief. Um, we thought our with the consultation with our chiefs and with the HR director that it would make sense and be preferable here that instead of leaving that decision-making power to one individual, it would fall on this committee of three. So Nick has drafted the language that would add to the, um, would amend the ordinances to reflect this concept. Uh, Alby, do you wanna say anything about this? Um, you're for this, right? Yeah, they, discussing with the uh, HR director and Chief De Federico, we you know we have no opposition to this. Just give you a little more background. This has always been this is nothing new. The 24 hours after a shift for a public safety officer. So th this has been around forever. We had heart and hypertension automatic coverage up until 1996. That's gone away now. It has to be proved through workman's comp. So this goes back 30, probably more than 30 years. Uh, of what they consider a line of duty 24 hours after a firefighter or emergency or public safety officer leaves their shift. Um, the background on this law, the fire chief had a line of duty in Connecticut and was doing his due diligence to call it a line of duty. The firefighter died an hour and a half after his shift and he was doing his due diligence waiting for results from an autopsy, waiting for results from toxicology because myself and I'm sure John, Chief DeFederico, wouldn't want to make a quick decision to say absolutely line of duty. We would want to make sure that everything was done right. When the fire chief went to make the determination, the municipality took the authority away from him. So it actually, this bill started on the fire service making a push for it. And kind of that's where like, all right, well, if he, if we don't make a law, then you guys will have it. But if the town wants to make a law, so that's kind of the background on the bill. So the chief was trying to do it right. And the municipality took the authority away from him at that point to make that, uh, to make that uh, determination. So I don't think, and with John, who's on, I believe he's online myself, uh, HR director Jones, we, we don't have any opposition for the, the committee that they're looking to put together. Um, to make that determination, we would go through the same, some type of protocol to uh, to make sure that um, that everything's done right. So you think the committee approach lends credibility? It's less likely to be second guessed after the fact. Definitely, yeah. I mean, that's one way to, to definitely could look at it, and I think that's kind of the fear of uh, CCM, which is the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities. You guys are probably familiar with. I think that it. Obviously, not all our fire departments are career, you know, under the town's direction and stuff like that. So there might have been a little fear of let, you know, letting certain chiefs make that determination also. So um, I think for, our, for our visibility, I think it's good to have that small committee put together. Anybody have any questions? And it, it's such a narrow scope, too. It's just the, the only issues are those heart and hypertension, stroke, you know, the cardiac events and everything, the three things that are outlined in there that it really addresses. If there, anything happened while the firefighter or police officer was on duty, it's pretty much automatic that that gets the, uh, the uh, designation. All right. And in that case, I'll move that we adopt the following language. You want to read it? Sure. Uh, resolved the Town of <clears throat> New Canaan Code of Ordinances, Chapter 44. Uh, personnel, quote unquote, shall be amended in accordance with Public Act 24-16 as follows. New section 44-50, certain death benefit determinations. If the death of a firefighter, a police officer, or any emergency medical service personnel is caused by a cardiac event, stroke, or pulmonary embolism that occurred not later than 24 hours after the decedent concluded a shift or training, a committee consisting of the decedent's respective department head, Parent, the fire chief, police chief, or emergency medical, 
we're going to change that to medical services yeah. captain and paren the human resources director and the first selectman shall have the authority to determine whether the decedent died in the line of duty and so we have a motion we have a second second uh, i think i saw christina first um all in favor easy meeting thank you thank you mr bassett thank you <clears throat> And you guys can have it. Business. Okay. So, um, so I'll, I will move to uh, adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Nick. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Okay, who seconded it? Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick.